Hey, what's going on guys and welcome back to another episode in my Football Manager series. This is episode number 92 and today we are returning with a brand new season as our 11th year of the day and gets underway. We're going to take a look at pre-season, play the first game of the new Premier League campaign as we face Fulham away at Craven Cottage and of course have the transfer special as well. So let's get to that first. And I would definitely say this is one of the most interesting transfer windows of the series due to financial reasons. Because if you missed the season finale, uh, then you would have missed the fact that the club right now are looking for a new location to build a new stadium, which of course, of course uh, which will uh, cost an awful lot of money. And uh, we didn't get any initial budgets for the new season either. Now we eventually got them, and it turned out it was only £35 million for the new window, which I can only theorise is because the club wants to save as much money as possible for when they want to build a new stadium as to not be in too much debt. So it was an interesting window. Our finances were a little bit depleted because of that. And uh, I also decided to try and raise some money as well to make sure that the board would not be sweating too much over the plans for the new stadium. So uh, we sold quite a few players and you can see a couple of big names there that have left the club. Uh, we'll start off with a couple of players that got released. Uh, Lucas Digne has gone to Shakhtar, the next guard of the season here. And Mohamed Salah has left the club as well. I'll get into Salah in a minute. It's quite interesting. But uh, also as well, we uh, loaned out some youngsters as well. Uh, Romain has once again gone out on loan, this time to Real Sociedad. Uh, we also loaned out Cordoba to Wolfsburg for a year. And, uh, and also Steve Taylor, a young left back, has gone to Blackpool as well. Uh, but as for sales, there were a few of them. And, uh, well, it was it was pretty interesting. Now, Koza left the club. He was a South African centre-back we picked up a few years ago on a free transfer. He's gone for £12.5 million to her to Berlin. This was a percentage of uh, profit of next sale in that, uh, including that as well as a clause there, which is always nice. Uh, James Bree left the club as well. Seven years at the den, James Bree. What a great, loyal servant he was for us. Our, our first choice right back, then turned back up right back. James Bree off to Atletico Madrid uh, for £12 million. Pounds. A, a loyal servant. Sad to let him go, but I decided it was better really he wanted to leave he was unhappy with the, uh, the lack of first team football and decided to cash in on him whilst we could still get a decent fee for him and also you you, you would have seen by the, the name by now the big sale of the window was uh, Guiliano Mauri uh, the Italian centre half we bought many years ago from Inter uh, several years spent at a club originally first choice then became backup and I decided to cash in on the guy make a profit on him we sold him for 27.5 mil a really good fee to Hillsborough and um, and yeah I thought it was a good sale there despite the fact he was still quite a reliable centre back for us, and only was he 25 years old, 25, 26 years old as well. Mario's gone anyway, and uh, and there you go. And also as well, we did see Salah got released, and it's really interesting. He's gone back to Anfield. He, uh, he was let go by Liverpool. We snapped him up for last season on a one-year deal. And now he's back at Anfield. I think that's brilliant. So Salah back at Anfield. That's fantastic. And also as well, oh, I'll, I'll, I'll best show you this and get out of the way. Root the band-aid off right now. It's happening. It's happening. Not this season, but next season. Menji is going to leave the club. It was it was, it was was the dilemma last season. I was thinking he's, he's surely going to go at some point. Menji's surely going to go at some point. I wanted to keep him, but we're keeping him for the rest of the season. But it's actually a really good deal. I tried to offer him a contract in the summer, but he just he was not having it he did not want to stay here and he's only got one year left in his deal so I thought instead of leave, uh, losing him for a free why don't we try and get a bit of money and arrange a future transfer like I often do with players in the final year of the contract and to get 37 million from Wolfsburg and it could rise to 40 million as well for a player that we would have lost for free at the end of the season anyway that's a good deal so it's sad to see him go but he was going to go anyway so to get that amount of money for him I'm, I'm pretty pleased with that to be honest and also Freddie Woodman is finally going to lead the club as well I think he's been here for like eight or nine years the past four years He's not made a single appearance for the first team in the Premier League and now he's decided to leave. He's off to Brownwell late in the end of the season. That's when his contract expires for three quarters of a million as well. So that's the players that are leaving the club and uh, now let's move on to the signings. So first up, and um, we always start with the least interesting of the signings, and this one certainly isn't that interesting, but, you know, worth looking at anyway. Uh, Nathan Hughes, who you might have noticed on our, uh, our players' out list, uh, he's been loaned to Middlesbrough uh, for this season, and uh, we won't see him this year. I picked him on a free chance, was let go of Man City uh, after a couple of loan spells at Blackburn Rovers and New York City as well. Uh, we picked him up, just, just a low-risk signing, really. You know, just a free transfer, low wages on four grand a week, and uh, he's been immediately loaned out to Middlesbrough. So, um, yeah, with Bree gone, I for, you know, maybe a new backup right back for the future. And, you know, he looks okay. So some decent stats. He's only 20 years old as well, so a long way to go in his career. And uh, could prove to be a decent squad right back in the future. The ceiling's not that high for him, but he could be a valuable squad member. And on a free transfer, worth picking up. But the interest levels rise from the second signing onwards, and that's for sure, because the other players we brought in, either big names or ones to watch. And this guy is a big name. Andrea Bellotti is the second signing of the 
few players I will show you uh, heading into the new season. Uh, of course, the former Torino striker, the Italian, deadly in front of goal. He's got some absolutely fantastic stats still. He's 33 and turns 34 in December, yet he's still got it. Physically speaking, he's not the quickest, but he's still got 17 for strength. Mentally, he's really, really good as well. A great experienced pro to bring in. You know I always bring in at least one or two every single window. And um, he's still got some great stats here. 17 off the ball still. Uh, 16 work rate I love as well. 16 composure, 17 anticipation, a really crucial stat on, uh, on a striker. With 16 finishing, 16 heading. Uh, it's, it's, it's just a great signing. You know, a free transfer. He didn't actually get on too well when he left Torino in the game to join Man City, 52 million. Didn't have a great uh, goal to game ratio. But it's because most of the games he was playing coming off the bench. He had a loan spell at Sevilla last year in Spain and scored 17 and 37. So despite the, uh, the age now being 33 years old, he still got it. He still got it. And I thought on a free transfer, it's 60 grand a week on a one-year deal. It's not even that much. So, Blotti in for the year. And um, I, I think as a third slash fourth choice striker, that's a great option to have. I'm pleased with that one. And next up, we'll go with the Wonder Kid, who came in for a very cheap £9 million and is going to be worth a hell of a lot more than that in the future. I'm really excited to watch this guy develop over the years here at the Den. Marcel Ox is the third sign of the five I'll show you. And he's described as a Wonder Kid, and he definitely could prove to be one of the best players in the world in a few years' time if he kicks on and develops. So he picked him on Rapid Vienna for £9 million. Not much spent on the Austrian. And when you look at the guy's stats, physically... You know, he's, he's pretty decent. You know, he's not slow. He's, he's relatively quick. 15 acceleration and 14 pace. And, and, and in terms of his stamina and natural fitness for a CM, very important. 17 natural fitness, 15 stamina, 17 balance as well. So physically quite decent. Mentally, he's actually not that great. He's not great. Uh, got great stats mentally. You know, he's only turned 20 a few days ago. So long way to go to improve the mental side of his game. But 20 determination. I love it when you've got a new gen slash region that's so young, but is still so determined at that age as well. And technically, this guy really excels. He's got some absolutely incredible stats all across the board for the most part, really. He's one of those players that could definitely be retrained to play in different positions as well. Either on the left-hand side as perhaps an inside forward with 13 finishing, 16 dribbling as well. Either playing through the middle where he is right now with 16 first touch, 16 passing, uh, 16 technique as well. Really, really good. And also, you can you can definitely see the guy playing in, in like the right-back role as well if you really want to get uh, get crazy here. And playing as a right-back with 15 for tackling, 12 and 12 for marking positioning, not that bad either. 13 crossing as well so this guy could play in a wide variety of positions he reminds me actually quite a lot of a whole player I had last year on my whole save uh, called Farouk Balut he, he came to central midfielder and he retrained him to play right back that's exactly what we're doing right now with Marcel Ox as a youngster he could definitely be retrained in a wide variety of positions and could play anywhere really he's like this year's Balut he looks absolutely fantastic though as a youngster uh, and again if he kicks on and develops and with 20 determination he should do he could prove to be an absolute star in world football looks fantastic it's actually only two more signings to show you so uh which one do we go in next oh, it's, it's got to be this one surely there's there's two decent players but uh, i think we'll go with the experienced pro and this guy's a dressing room leader he's a winner and I'm really happy to, happy to have him here. John Stones is the penultimate signing I'll show you. And I really, really am pleased to get the guy. Because obviously we don't need a new centre-back. We don't need a new centre-back. We, we've got a job lot of these already. You know, we, we, we've got a lot of good centre-backs. But I, I love signing players that in the game have won loads of silverware and have a high leadership stat as well. That is the definition of a dressing room leader. You know, someone to come in, they've got the leadership stat. They've got many years under their belt. They're, they're an ex experienced international. 110 caps for England already. And look at what he's won both for club and country. He looks, well, I say, you know, for country, for club mainly. He looks absolutely fantastic in terms of his, uh, his, his accolades and what he's won over the years for Manchester City. And also, he's still got it as well. You know, physically, he's, he's not the best anymore, but with 90 in natural fitness, he's not going to be, you know, like in a wheelchair next season. He's still got some okay stats here, physically with 14 for strength as well. Mentally, the guy's absolutely fantastic, and that's why we signed him, of course. Mentally, the dressing room leader. He's got some great stats here. I love some of these stats, including uh, 16 positioning, 17 leadership, 17 composure, 16 braver as well. And technically, again, at 33 years old, he's still pretty decent. 14 heading, 16 marking, tackling 15. There's a ball playing centre back as well, uh, passing 15 and first touch 13 as well. He's still got some really, really good stats on the guy. So John Stone's in, a free transfer for a year, and he plays 15 league games as well. He'll get an extension to the year. I'm, I'm pleased with this. Again, a dressing room leader. That's what we wanted. That's what we got. John Stone's in. Welcome.
And the final signing I'll show you is the most expensive of the window and the only one out of the five that will probably be expected to start in our first 11 this year. Um, but it, it's not even like that massive, but I still thought it was a really good deal. And in terms of value for money, all of these signings are a really good deal. So welcome to Millwall Football Club, Fernando Pereira, uh, a new first choice right back for a signing this season from Benfica. Uh, he's an Argentine. And he only cost us £23 million as well. Spent one year playing in Portugal for Benfica. Got the title. Of course, if you watch the, uh, the special in-depth save, you'll know if you stayed at Benfica for long enough, it'd have about 10 league titles racked up in 10 seasons. But anyway, he's coming. Uh, £23 million. And I've got to say, I really like to look at this guy as well. There's only one stat that concerns me, and that's 11 for determination. God damn it, Fernando. Get more determined. Son. But other than that, this guy looks really, really good. Now, with Ranieri right now, he's only 21 years old, but I'm still not sure just how good he's going to become. But this guy looks fantastic already. Now he comes in, he's relatively quick, 16 acceleration, 14 pace, 17 agility, and good fitness and stamina as well, 17 and 14 for natural fitness and stamina respectively. 15 strength is good defensively as well. Mentally, he's not bad, 15 anticipation, 14 composure, 15 concentration, 16 positioning and 15 work rate as well. And technically he's very good when going forward and defending as well. 13 crossing, 14 dribbling, could be a threat when attacking down the right hand side. And also as well, he's got 13 for marking, tackling 13, and passing 13 as well. So defending and and attacking and supporting he's got good stats in all the right areas nothing you know significantly amazing but nicely well balanced and pretty decent again ni mentally nicely well balanced pretty decent physically nicely well balanced and pretty decent he just like a, looks like a really decent new right back for us and um, I think he will become our first choice this season with Ranieri settling for more of a bench role this season but anyway he's got some good stats and again could be retrained to play in different positions as well and, um, and yeah I'm pretty happy with it 100 grand a week 5 year deal relatively expensive but I guess what you got to pay nowadays uh, in world football for decent players in your first 11 for a Champions League sort of player, a uh, Champions League sort of club. And yeah, Pereira's in, and I like the look of him as well. So £23 million spent on him, £32 million in total, because the only other player that caused a transfer fee was Marcel Ox. The other three were freebies. You've got to love that. And, uh, and £56 million was uh, was raised for the sales of quite a few of our players as well. So, yeah, a transfer window in the end, which is quite interesting. It wasn't like a, a major one for major sales and major signings. But we, we improved the team quite slightly whilst also making a profit. And I think that's fantastic business, really, especially when you consider the fact that, again, we are right now looking for a new uh, location to build a new stadium in. So I thought we did some great business this window. It wasn't about spending all of our money and, and bringing in world-class players. No, I said in a special in-depth save, we're growing our players organically. And I really like that. And the fact we didn't have much money to work with anyway, £31 million, our original budget is less than our current transfer budget. So in my opinion, in terms of the business we did this window, we did really, really well. Because the team hasn't gotten weaker. Yes, of course, we've, uh, we, we've lost Maori. That's probably the, the biggest uh, loss of the window. And we lost uh, James Bree as well. But in terms of the squad depth and the team report right now, I don't think our team's got weaker at all. I don't think that our team's got weaker at all. In fact, I was going as far as saying it's got slightly stronger, particularly in the defensive area with uh, the new signing Pereira coming in at right back and also John Stones arriving on a free as well. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm really happy with the business we did in, in this window. I thought we did really, really well. To raise money... Uh, you know, and make our, sli uh, make our side, you know, slightly stronger, I think that's pretty decent. So, um, yeah, lots of money still left in the bank, uh, bank balance for the uh, for the chairman and whatnot to, uh, to to worry about a new location for a new stadium. And, and yeah, other than that, I'm, I'm pleased with the window. It was really good. Now, that's what happened in pre-season. Uh, you can see what went on with the Lions and how we did. Uh, we won all of our games except for one, uh, which was the 5-1 defeat to Real Madrid in the Den Cup final. I know you guys are the same as me, but every single season... In, uh, in one of the weekends leading up to the uh, to the, the first game in the in the league, I always do a uh, a cup, and it's always like you know the Den Cup, or if it was at Manchester United, the Old Trafford Cup or whatever. But um, this season. We, we won the semi 3 0 against River Plate. And I went to the final thinking, oh, yeah, start off with winning our Den Cup, always a good sign. And we got battered. We scored in the first minute. Rashford, it was on trial, scored in the first minute. I was like, oh, yeah, piece of cake. It's our competition again. And then Real Madrid just thumped us and won by five goals to one. Pretty funny. But anyway, uh, other than that, every other game was a win. And uh, we, of course, we, of course, included the token that the week before the new season starts, take on a, 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 a non league side and thump them at home, get the testosterone flowing, as I always call it. And uh, we won by 11 goals no I do it every single season every single season before the uh, before the new year starts but um, anyway uh, that's how preseason went that's how our team is currently looking right now and I don't I don't think there's anything else to show you 
uh, right now uh, in terms of what happened in preseason. That's pretty much it. In terms of our social groups right now, two players are out of the core, which is uh, Ruli and Pereira. Everyone else is in the core, but those two Argentines don't want to be in the WhatsApp group. But uh, as of the hierarchy right now, three uh, team leaders, same as you saw last season, Kuchar, Webster and McKenney, our captain and vice captain, and of course our best ever academy graduate as well. So other than that, I think that's pretty much it. And uh, I guess one thing to show you might be worth in, uh, worth uh, noting down. Uh, Mamadou Koulibaly uh, with Senegal won the African Cup of Nations as well, which is kind of cool. I always like it when your players win something on the, in, on the international stage as well. And uh, it's the first time he's won the African Cup of Nations. And uh, yeah, I thought that was kind of cool. He actually scored two goals uh, in uh, in the semi-final to take him to the final. And then in the final, he was benched and didn't even play, which is kind of annoying. But uh, he, he still won uh, a winner's medal, and that's kind of cool as well. So yeah, other than that, that's the squad. That's the under-23s right now. And, um, and yeah, let's just starting to the first game of the new season as you take on Fulham away at Craven Cottage. So, oh yeah, competition's overview. Probably a good idea. Show you that as well. Uh, in terms of the league right now, I said it in the season finale. We are now a club that is expected to finish in the top four year after year. Last season, our first year finishing in the top four, finishing in third. This season and from now on onwards, the board, the fans and the players and myself, everyone is expecting us to be a top four team now. That is the minimum expectation. Uh, Champions League reached first knockout round, just like last season. And as the Carabao Cup, that's not important. And the FA Cup is to reach the semi-final as well. So let's get into it then. First game of the new season, we take on Fulham away at Craven Cottage. Of course, the stadium we were ground sharing at last season. So this is our team for the game. Then 4-2-4, our normal instructions in the league. I love this system. And this will be our team. Ruli's in goal due to a minor knock for Petkovic. Big, big opportunity for Ruli as well. Obviously, last season he came in, didn't justify his 140 grand a week, but he had a good end to the season. If he starts this season off well, I'm tempted to make him our number one for the new year. Uh, so Ruli in goal, but for a time and all stop, Ferencic and Pereira making his debut. McKenney back from injury and Paolo are our CMs with Louise and Webster on the wings and up top together, Benka and Wacky Kabaki as well. He's also tipped as well to be the second highest scorer in the division. Uh, they, they've, had, they've had him, the bookies have had him as the, uh, the second favourite to, uh, to be the top scorer in the division. Uh, and on the bench, Petkovic, uh, Daniel, Ranieri, Dobby, O'Reilly, Pingu, and Rhett Kuchar as well. And just since I uh, just remembered there, why don't we do a season preview as well? Because uh, I always forget to do this every single season. It's, it's really cool though. It's cool to see what's, what's going on in season preview, where the media expects to finish and whatnot. And um, and yeah, so first game, it's, uh, it's Fulham McCraven Cottage. Let's get the win. Come on, you Lions. You might have noticed a couple of uh, squad number changes for this season as well. Uh, most notably, Pereira's taken James Bree's number at two. And uh, Paolo has now got the number four instead of number 18. I, I do I do see comments every now and then of people saying I should sort out the numbers and it should always be one to 11. I've I got to be honest here. Now, I am, I am, I am a bit of a, uh, you know, I'm a bit, <laughs> I'm not sure what the PC term is right now, but I can be a little bit, um, I really don't know what the PC term is for this, but I can be a bit OCD when it comes down to squad numbers, I guess. I, I do tend to make sure that certain players have to have certain numbers. For example, like a right back and a left back have to be two and three, obviously. That's obvious. You can't give those numbers to anyone else, really. And uh, of course, the goalkeeper has to be number one. You couldn't have like a centre back wearing number nine for whatever. But I do like to have like some some interesting numbers as well, like if you will. So Kabaki, for example, 43, Benka, 42. Just interesting little numbers there. Obviously, Kopekovic wears number 50, Ferencic wears number number 33 I quite like that as well but um, yeah I, I thought this year you know with uh, with Maori going Paolo deserves the number four it just it, it suits him really doesn't it and, uh, and there you go anyway first highlight coming 31 minutes in after me nattering on about squad numbers there it's going to come to the host as well as they attack through the middle Lee Jung Su finding Turner he finds Boateng Rudy can't keep it out and it's the worst possible start flew in front 31 minutes in terrible beginning Ben Chilwell our former left back into Lee Jung Su she can get a ball off for him in nicely worked bo a ball inside the Turner, great control on the chest, picks out the spare man Boateng and Rudy gets a touch but can't keep it out. So trailing by a goal already, Fulham in front. That was the only highlight so far in the first half and we're yet to get going which is a surprise because playing this formation and using these tactics, we normally get quite a lot of chances due to how top heavy we are with four forward players but at the moment we're heading into the break. We've only had one shot that's been off target and that's it. So terrible start. We've got to turn this round. Well, this is not how I expected to start the season off. So I'm going to get aggressive right in the first team talk of the season. And I'm going to say to the boys, come on, lad, show a bit of desire. You don't look like a team that wants to win. We motivate everyone apart from Josh Timon. You've got a new contract in the summer as well. Come on, Josh. And uh, he's now motivated. So second half is going to begin. And, uh, well, I, I, I genuinely am going to be very annoyed 
if if this is how the first game of the season goes. No shots on target so far. Still trailing by a goal. Sort it out. Let's go. Come on. That's more like it. Second half begins. Look at that. Four shots already and one on target as well. And Chilwell's just taken down Webster, former teammates there, and he's off for a second yellow card. Now, that's the start he wanted to the second half. Already uh, running at the left back there, getting Ben Chilwell, the former left back, sent off. They're down to 10 men. Come on. Half an hour to go. Let's get back on double terms. Tell you what, we could do now is switch to a 4 2 3 1 because we'll have a lot more of the ball now. So you can retain possession. Let's stretch them out wide. Let's much higher the tempo. We'll Stick in control as well. Take work the ball into the box off. Take the play, play out the defence off as well. Mixed passing up a little bit. And um, and yeah, let's let's get a few more chances on board, shall we? So, right, what we're going to do is we're going to switch Pereira and Timon up to now to play as wing backs here. Give them more freedom to attack down the flanks. In fact, I'm going to take off Timon for Pingu, and we'll swap those two roles around there, because Luis can play wing-back, and Pingu can attack with fresh legs down left-hand side. And I think we'll play Benk as the advanced playmaker. We'll play uh, Paolo as a box-to-box. -box. And what we'll do is we'll bring on O'Reilly to play as a Roman playmaker. We can have a front five at any one point. So let's make those changes there, as we're still trading by one. 27 minutes to go. Come on. Highlight for Fulham over corner, whipped into the centre, O'Reilly off the bench, heads it away, and Paolo will lose out in the battle there, I thought he was going to win that one, and uh, Fulham get it straight back, Robinson on yes, yeah, rolls it through, oh, Boateng, oh, wow, what a let-off, he was through for his second goal and really makes a save, what's happened? We're really going for it right now, it's a 4-2-4, four, four, but we just, we can't, we can't get the chances right now, we're still trading by a goal. Right, I'm scratching my head and thinking, what am I going to do? Benker and Kabaki. Benker in particular has been poor on 6.5. I can't believe I'm going to take off Benker from wreck, but I'm going to have to right now. Because, well, we're not going to get the chance at the moment. O'Reilly on the ball. Through. Pingu. Can he latch onto it? Yes, he can. Flag stays down. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Our only clear-cut chance of the game. And Pingu has just put it an absolute mile wide running through one-on-one. -on -one. Now, I think he's only scored one goal for us since we signed him, and that's why. Still 1-0. We're throwing everyone forward right now. Kuchar to Kabaki puts it into the side netting. Come on, lad. Seriously. We're playing like a 4-1, 4-1, but not the defensive midfield formation, but the attacking midfield formation. And, well, we're going to lose on the opening day to 10 men Fulham. And this is a terrible start to the season. There was me thinking what we've got to do this season is keep the band together as Paolo Lopez claims that cross and that should do it. Make sure that Benka doesn't leave. Make sure that Louise doesn't leave. Make sure that Webster doesn't leave. We do all of that. There was interest for the former two. And, well, we've lost the opening day by a goal to nil. You know, we have a really poor record on opening days, and it's continued. We lost last season against Arsenal, 6-3. We've now been beaten by Fulham by a goal to nil. And they had 10 men as well. I tell you this, there, there, there is a curse on Millwall Football Club when it comes down to open days. We've only won, like, two or three in the entire series. And we still start our 11th year off with a loss away at Craven Cottage. Did not play well at all. And that is a very, very poor way to start off a season where now we are expected by everyone to finish in the top four. Well, the transfer window shuts early nowadays and I'm wishing it didn't because that was poor. That was terrible. Wow. So that ends today's episode of the Football Manager Series, guys. A big thank you for watching. I really hope you have enjoyed it. And if you did enjoy today's episode, please drop a like. Like, sorry, of course, very much appreciated. And you're up channel out as well. Uh, much love to you all. Have a fantastic day. And we'll see you for the next episode very soon, which will feature the first game at the Champions League group stage. Well, we need to perform a lot better if we're going to start off that competition with a win. And also Southampton away at St. Mary's as well, where hopefully we've picked up our first Premier League points since then. Have a fantastic day. Uh, much love to you all. And I'll see you for the next episode very soon, where hopefully we're much improved very soon. Bye.